Hi friends, welcome to my channel Only Bio. Presenting up the series of challenging MCQs from Group A 11 to 15, all with a detailed explanation. The question number 11 relates with the chapter Principles of Inheritance and Variation. And the question is, when two dominant genes are present on one chromosome and their recessive alleles on another homologous chromosome, the linkage relationship is dash. And your options are A. Said to be in the repulsion phase. B. Said to be in the coupling phase. C. Known as homozygosity. And D. Known as trans arrangement. And the correct answer for this question is B. It is said to be in the coupling phase. Now, shayad aapke dimang mein aayega ki ye coupling repulsion kya hota hai. So, let's understand this. Friends, please remember, jo bhi genes ek chromosome pe maujood hote hai, whichever are the genes present on the same chromosome are said to be linked with one another. I repeat, all the genes that are present on the same chromosome are said to be linked with one another. Now, when two genes are very, very close together on the same chromosome pair, they do not assort independently. Bateson, Bateson was the first scientist to ideally give the explanation of this lack of independent assortment by means of this particular hypothesis which is known as the coupling and the repulsion hypothesis. Now, what does it mean? Coupling means when both the dominant alleles are on the same homologous chromosome and both the recessive alleles are on the other homologous chromosome. Yani, dono dominant genes hai. For example, capital T, capital R. Ye ek chromosome par hai aur dono recessive gene, yani small t, small r, ye dusre chromosome par maujood hai. And recessive, uh, uh, jab gene ka combination uske saath ho, what I mean is repulsion jo hota hai, usme ek homologous chromosome par ek dominant aur ek recessive ye combination hoga. Okay. So, look on the screen please, you will understand it better. Types of linkages based on the genes involved. Based on the genes involved, depending on whether all dominant or some dominant and some recessive alleles are linked together, linkage can be categorized into coupling phase and repulsion phase. The coupling phase is said to be the one in which Dominant alleles are present on the same chromosome and recessive alleles are present on the same chromosome matlab, of the other pair of the homologous chromosome. Now look on the screen here you can see what I mean by that. Capital T, capital R. Ye dono bhi dominant genes hai. Ye ek chromosome par hai. Aur usi ka jo homologous chromosome hai, us par dono recessive genes hai. We find small t, small r on the other homologous chromosome and in case of repulsion phase dominant alleles of some genes are linked with recessive alleles of other genes on the same chromosome for example capital T small r yani capital T yani dominant hai small r recessive hai ye ek particular chromosome ka combination hai aur usi ka jo homologous pair hai us par us chromosome par Combination kaisa hai to small t capital R, yani one recessive other dominant. This is what is meant by coupling and repulsion. Hope you have got this. Now question number 12 also relates with the chapter principles of inheritance and variation and along with this even it relates with chromosomal basis of inheritance. And the question is, lethal genes are much less common in haploid organisms than in diploids because your options are A. Of smaller size of haploids B. Of more number of diploids in nature C. In haploids a gene is expressed even in single dose and D. Of the occurrence of irregular meiosis in haploid. 
and the correct answer for this option is C. In haploids, a gene is expressed even in single dose. Now friends, let us understand what exactly do we mean by lethal genes. Lethal genes or lethal alleles are those which can cause the death of the organism that carries them. Okay, that means it is fatal. Now, this is definitely possible that it is like this. So, why is it? Lethal genes come from where? So, lethal genes arise because of mutations in the genes that are essential for growth or development. So, these lethal genes can be dominant or recessive or conditional depending on the gene or the genes that are involved. So, lethal genes are those which can cause death of an organism prenatally. Now, what do I mean by prenatally? Yani before birth, peda hone se pehle. Or any time after birth. Though they commonly are going to be seen in the early phase of development. So, in all you can say that all the genes that result in the reduction of the viability of an individual or become a cause of the death of the individuals carrying them are called as lethal genes. Now, lethal genes can also be said to be of two types like dominant lethal genes and the recessive lethal genes. Now, what is meant by dominant lethal gene? A dominant lethal gene is the one which can kill the individual in both homozygous and heterozygous states. But in case of recessive lethal gene, it can kill the person on, only if it is in a recessive uh, what you can say homozygous condition and the examples for recessive lethal genes are uh, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia and achondroplasia. Now achondroplasia you might be knowing uh, it is a kind of a dwarfism which is termed as short limbed dwarfism. You know, the hand is very small in this particular condition. Uh, now we go on to the next question. The next question that is question number 13 relates with classification of plants and the question is in which of the following characters does Selaginella differ from Funaria and your options are A. Well defined xylem B. Predominant sporophytic phase C. Predominant gametophytic phase and D. Both A and B. And your answer is both A and B. Let me remind you friends that Funaria it is an example of bryophytes and Selanginella is an example of pteridophyte. Selanginella is also at times known as the spike moss or small club moss. And Funaria mein fumus means rope, so rope moss sort of. Now, Selaginella and Funaria are the mosses which have some common features like the archegonium, the motile sperm and the embryo. But Selaginella is the one which has roots and in case of Funaria, it has rhizoids. This also is one of the important points to be kept in mind. We come to the next question. Now the next question also relates with the chapter classification of plants and the question is Diatoms belong to dash and your options are A. Basiliariophyceae B. Charophyceae C. Chlorophyceae and D. Sinophyceae and your correct answer for this question is Basiliario physiae. Now this is, look on the screen, this is what you can see, a beautiful uh, picture showing the diatoms. Let me remind you, diatoms are unicellular algae and it is normally said that the diatoms, they live in the glass house. Surprising, right? Now what exactly do I mean by this? See, diatoms are the only organisms on the entire planet with the cell walls composed of transparent silica. There are almost 16,000 species which are found in the sediments or attached to the solid substances in the water. And the most important sea microbes, okay, they are the most important sea microbes because 
they directly or indirectly serve as food for many animals and yes you might be even recollecting this point about diatomaceous earth a substance that is composed of fossil dye atoms and this is used in filters insulation in paints in abrasives in varnishes and so on so now the next question is it relates with the chapter nutrition and the question is a piece of liver is taken from a rat and after drying it is subjected to chemical analysis the chief chemical component obtained will be dash and your options are a vitamin k b proteins c carbohydrates and d that is fats and the correct answer for this question is c that is carbohydrates now remember carbohydrates are stored in the liver right in the form of glycogen and this is the place that is liver is the place where they are broken down into the glucose and siphoned into the blood stream to maintain the glucose levels so they will be stored as glycogen and released whenever there is a quick burst of energy needed so that's the reason the correct answer for this particular question stands to be carbohydrates friends okay, this series is helping you out and please like subscribe and hit the bell icon and share this particular thing with as many people as possible so that everybody whoever is a medical aspirant can definitely be helped by this thank you so much and yes i am definitely waiting for your comments